Today we're going to be troubleshooting and replacing this diverter valve on my 2018 Audi S4, which I've now owned for just under a year. This is the first mechanical failure that I've experienced on this vehicle. The very first symptom that I saw that led me initially to believe that there was something wrong, I was hearing really heavy compressor surge, really, really heavy. <laughs> In fact, the surging was so crazy, there were pedestrians snapping their neck to look back when I would downshift to see what is making that racket. And in my case, I do believe it's the diverter valve. Removing the diverter valve is as simple as removing one, two, three Torx bolts, and then it comes right out. It has one electrical connection. It is as easy as a job like this gets, definitely a one wrench that anybody can get started with. To kick the job off, you should remove the plastic engine cover if you still have it on, it just pops right off, it sits on these pegs here, and you can leave the heat shield on, that doesn't have to come off. In my case, mine is already cool to the touch, so I can put things on there, but obviously if the engine is hot, you gotta be careful working around it. So I'm gonna set some of my tools down here. And the tools I'm using today is a little magnetic holder so that I can make sure my bolts don't go flying around everywhere. I have a little socket kit with some different bits and I'm using this little wearer wrench and a little extension and a T30 Torx bit at the end of it to take our fasteners off. I recommend disconnecting the electrical connection first. So use your fingernail to push that, push down and pull away. And you do have to push down, there is a little lever mechanism that releases it and get that thing right out of your way. And now it's a good idea to move some of these vacuum lines just a little out of the way so you have clear access to the bolts. And why don't we start with the hard one, which is the one back there. You wanna make sure not to lose your bit. So if you go to pull out, you know, you wanna put your finger in there and catch it. There should not be much torque there. It should be quite easy. So I've loosened that now. Let's loosen the other two. That one's done. And see what I mean about them getting stuck? You don't want that falling in. You wanna catch that with your hand. And there you go. Here's one of our bolts. You definitely don't wanna drop these under your turbo. You're gonna be really sad if a bolt goes under there. And here we go. This is our diverter valve. That's all it really is. It's just this little guy. My diverter ends in E, which is an older model than the one that we're installing. Hopefully the new model will last longer. This one ends in an F, which is the newer model that we want. On the surface of it, these things look pretty much identical. Here's the old one, here's the new one. But the big difference, if I put this up next to my ear, I can hear this one's like sandpapery. And this one's nice and smooth. Now, what I did to diagnose the issue is I initially took it out. Oh, and I could actually tell how loose that one is and how much tighter that one is. So initially what I did is I took it out and I applied a little bit of lubricant and I worked it in and out. It started to work a little better and that's how I diagnosed the issue. I popped it back in and suddenly I wasn't getting surging. I still got it occasionally, but not nearly as bad as I used to get it, right? So it definitely improved things and I can definitely tell that the new one is much smoother. Now, one thing I should mention about the operation of the diverter valve is it can be both stuck closed and open. When it's stuck open, it's gonna be bleeding air into your intake, which means you're not gonna be making all the power that your car should be making. You're gonna be under boost. And if it's stuck closed, that's when you're getting the surging. Now, if you have a bone stock car and your DV starts failing, it may be harder for you to hear the surge. I can hear the surge very well because of my 034 intake. That intake has a whole side panel kind of cut out of it and it lets you hear all the turbo noises. I do like to make sure the mating surface is clean. And for that, I'm gonna use these tub towel towels, which should be able to provide us a clean area to work with. I really like these towels. They really work on everything and anything. I clean pretty much all kinds of gook with them and hopefully we'll get a nice and shiny mating surface. Let's pop the new diverter valve in and torque this guy down. I recommend getting started on the two easier ones first just so there's less play in the unit and you're able to more easily get the last one in there without worrying about mating up with the hole accurately. Don't tighten it all the way. You just wanna line it up so that it's easier to do the last one. You definitely don't wanna torque just one of them down first and then get the rust coming in there crooked. Follow the typical best practice of 
getting everything just a little cinched up so that there's still movement and then coming back around and torquing it. That way you're not forcing anything. I'm gonna very carefully put the last bolt in by hand without dropping it. And then I'm gonna use my two fingers to kind of tighten it down because I don't wanna cross thread anything. I'm gonna tighten this one down just a little. It's not a lot of torque here, guys. See the bit wants to stay in again too. And we'll tighten this one down. All right, I'm happy with that. And now we pop in our electrical connection. We lock it and we're good. Now that the DV is back in place, it's time to put your engine cover back on if you took it off. Get all your tools out of the way, make sure everything's clean, and you can close the hood and give the car a start. I think it sounds pretty good to me, guys. I'm not really getting any codes, not hearing any flutter. I wanted to investigate this broken device a little more and see what was going on with it. So I broke the connector off just to give you more visibility into what I'm doing, but I've got a ground going to this 12 volt battery and I've got my, my hot side here and I'm just gonna energize so you can see the spark. I am sending energy in, but nothing's happening. But as soon as I touch it with my finger, it is working. And occasionally, if you do this for a bit, it will work, but um, like in this case, it's not. But as soon as you touch it, it, it does work. See, I'm even trying it with a second battery, which I know is full. I just charged this guy and I'm still not getting any action. Yeah, I'm going with this thing is broken, guys. I hope this is helpful if you're having this issue. Hopefully this fixed your car and I will have a lot more Audi content coming soon. There are affiliate links down below in the description. There are links to all the products we're using here. So if you need to find a new DV, you need the part number, please do use those. I get a very small commission and it helps run this channel. And of course, if you like the video, please subscribe, please leave me a like and a nice comment. It helps a lot and I will see you again really soon.